TPM can be so annoying. It may not be set up from where you bought your computer from, and you may have to set it up yourself. How do you know if TPM is already set up and running properly on your computer? If you're a gamer and play games like Valorant, the intrusive app Riot Vanguard requires TPM to be enabled in Windows 11. But wait, if I'm running Windows 11, shouldn't TPM already be enabled since it's a requirement? The TLDR is yes it's required and yes you can bypass this requirement when you install Windows 11. Whether you play games or run other apps, you should make sure TPM is enabled. How do you know if TPM is set up and enabled? We're going to cover both Windows 10 and Windows 11 operating systems. To check if TPM is set up and enabled, go to search, type tpm.msc and select it. If TPM is set up, the status should state the TPM is ready for use. If TPM is not set up, a message will state compatible TPM cannot be found. Compatible trusted platform module TPM cannot be found on this computer. Verify that this computer has a 1.2 TPM or later and it is turned on in the BIOS. You should also have TPM 2.0 listed in Windows 10 and Windows 11's device manager. To check, go to search and type device manager. Select it. If TPM 2.0 is enabled, it should be listed under the Security Devices category with the Trusted Platform Module 2.0. If Security Devices and TPM 2.0 are not listed, TPM is not set up on your system. Before we check the state of TPM, we should make sure BitLocker is not running. Although this feature is used more for large corporations or enterprises, changing certain settings like TPM with BitLocker enabled can cause your PC to no longer boot and worst of all, the contents on your hard drive or SSD could be lost. To confirm your BitLocker settings, go to search and type BitLocker. Click on Manage BitLocker. If BitLocker is off, all of your drives should state BitLocker off. If any drive has BitLocker on, turn off BitLocker. As a precaution, take a backup of your recovery key. You can save it to another drive that doesn't have BitLocker running or from your Microsoft account. This can take several minutes. Now that BitLocker is off, we'll need to reboot the PC and access the motherboard's UEFI BIOS. You either 1. Hold the left shift key down while rebooting your PC, select the troubleshoot option, the UEFI firmware settings, and restart. The other option, reboot your PC like normal, then press the keyboard shortcut to access your motherboard's UEFI BIOS. The keyboard shortcut will vary from system to system. It could display very quickly on startup. Now if you don't know what the shortcut is, consult your motherboard's manual for the correct key. We'll go through Intel and AMD related motherboards. This video will cover up to Intel's 12th and 13th generation processors. We will also cover AMD's AM5 Zen 4 platform. MSI and ASUS motherboard layouts will be used for this video. If you have a different motherboard, this should give you a general idea on what to look for. Let's start off with the MSI motherboard layout. If you are in MSI's easy mode, press F7 to go to advanced. Let's first make sure secure boot is enabled. Go to settings, go to advanced, and go to BIOS CSM slash UEFI. Make sure UEFI is selected. If this is set to CSM, secure boot will not enable. Before changing the setting to UEFI, make sure you have backed up all your documents or anything important to a USB stick, external storage, or on the cloud. After making this change, your PC will likely no longer boot into Windows. If you decide to proceed without backing up anything, you do so at your own risk. Let's go back to settings. Go to security. Make sure secure boot is enabled. The secure boot mode for most setups should be set to standard. If you're using an OS like Linux, the secure boot mode will likely be set to custom. Secure boot should be enabled if you're using Windows 11. Let's go back to the previous menu. Go to trusted computing. With Intel motherboards using 12th and 13th generation processors, for security device support, change it to enable. TPM device selection should be set to FTPM 2.0. DTPM should only be used if you install a dedicated TPM module. If you're using an Intel motherboard with an 11th generation or older processor, for security device support, change it to enable. TPM device selection should be set to PTT. For AMD motherboards using AMD Ryzen or Threadripper processors, for security device support, change it to enable. TPM device selection should be set to AMD CPU FTPM. After enabling security device support, you must reboot your system. Press F10 or hit the X on the top right. Save and reboot. TPM 2.0 should now be enabled. If you want to be 100% certain it's enabled in the UEFI BIOS, we'll need to reboot the system again. Press the keyboard shortcut to access the motherboard's UEFI BIOS. If Windows loads up again, reboot the PC again by holding the left shift key down while selecting restart. Select the troubleshoot option, 
the UEFI firmware settings and restart. In the UEFI BIOS, go to Settings, Security, Trusted Computing. Now you'll see additional security options listed. At the top, you will now see a TPM 2.0 device found. The firmware version, as well as the CPU vendor are listed. The defaults should be sufficient for Windows. Press F10 or hit the X on the top right. Save and reboot. Let's look at the ASUS motherboard layout. If you're in ASUS's easy mode, press F7 to go to advanced mode. Let's first check secure boot. Go to boot, go to CSM. Launch CSM should be set to disable. If CSM is enabled and you decide to disable, make sure you back up all your documents or anything important to a USB stick, external storage, or on the cloud. After making this change, your PC will no longer boot into Windows. If you decide to proceed without backing up anything, you do so at your own risk. Let's go back to the previous menu. Go to Secure Boot. If Secure Boot has not been set up, the Secure Boot state will be listed as Setup. If you plan to run only a Windows OS like Windows 10 or Windows 11, set the OS type to Windows UEFI mode. Go to Key Management. If Secure Boot was previously enabled, the below field should have something other than No Keys listed. If you just enable Secure Boot, No Keys will be present. Go to Install Default Secure Boot Keys. When prompted to load default secure keys, choose yes. As a reminder, secure boot should be enabled if you're using Windows 11. Go back to the previous menu and the secure boot state should indicate user or enabled. Now, let's make sure TPM is enabled. Let's go back to advanced. For Intel motherboards using 11th generation and older processors, go to PCHFW configuration. Make sure PTT is set to enable. For Intel motherboards using 12th and 13th generation processors, go to PCHFW configuration. Make sure TPM device selection is set to enable firmware TPM. For AMD motherboards using AMD Ryzen or Threadripper processors, go to AMD FTPM configuration. Make sure TPM device selection is set to firmware TPM. If you install the dedicated TPM module on your motherboard, you can choose dedicated TPM. For Intel and AMD motherboards, go back to advanced, then select trusted computing. Under select device support, changes to enable. Go to exit, save changes, and exit. TPM 2.0 should now be enabled. If you want to be 100% certain it's enabled in the UEFI BIOS, we'll need to reboot the system again. Press the keyboard shortcut to access the motherboard's UEFI BIOS. If Windows loads up again, simply reboot the PC by holding the left shift key down while selecting restart. Select the troubleshoot option, the UEFI firmware settings, and restart. From the UEFI BIOS, go to advanced and trust the computing. At the top, you will now see a TPM 2.0 device found. The defaults should be sufficient for Windows. Let's go back into Windows and check the TPM status. From the search icon, type tpm.msc and select it. If TPM has been set up, the status will state the TPM is ready for use. You should also have the specification version set to 2.0. Let's check the device manager in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Go to search and type device manager. You should now see security devices, then trusted platform module 2.0. Now, if you had BitLocker enabled, Go back in and enable it. Go to search and type BitLocker and click on Manage BitLocker. Turn on BitLocker for the drives you previously turned off. If you didn't have BitLocker enabled, you don't need to do anything in this section. Now, let's launch Valorant. You may need to reboot again because of Riot Vanguard. Reboot the computer once more. Let's try Valorant again. Congrats, TPM has been enabled. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Got suggestions? Let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing to the channel, turn on notifications, and follow me on Twitter at Dave Benito. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you guys next time.